Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is episode 20 of The Supernova Show. And I am your host, Fulton Roberts. Like always, uh, this week, uh, it's going to be a very interesting episode. We're going to have a little cut in there, so this will be, this will be fun. Uh, the first, this first little chunk, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Dustin Kim with me, and we're going to be talking about uh, a new little adventure that we're going on with the Supernova Network, and it's... Uh, its entire thing. Like uh, I'm, ho I've announced on the show a few times that I'm starting my own YouTube channel, and that's it. That's the logo for it. And this is the link. Yes, there are like a million characters there, but guess what? It's there. You can find it. Um, I'll put it. I'll make sure that's put down in the description somewhere or something while you're watching this. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring out Mr. Dustin Kim. How are you doing? Hi. Well, I'm doing um, uh, well. You? I can't complain. Uh, just another day. Uh, technically, when this comes out, it's Sunday. So, yeah, this is good. Uh, Friday for us, Sunday for them. So, yeah, I can't really complain. The weekend's about to start or the work week's about to start. So, man, it, it, it always goes by super fast, doesn't it? It always, yes, always does. I never far from a drink, though, so that helps. Yeah, um, yeah, that's always good. Um, so how how have things been? Um, I know I'll, I'll share a little bit of history. Me and you went to the same high school together. Uh, we've been friends for years. Um, yeah, and yeah, think a lot a lot has changed. I mean, since the last time you saw me, I got married, which I'm sure that's super scary to hear about because hey. A woman loves me enough to where, where she wants to put up with this all the time. And that's something. Every uh, every relationship has a reacher and a uh, settler. So I'm not going to say that I've pegged who's who, but I think we know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we might. We might. You know, I might ask, uh, you know um, 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 uh, Facebook and I think Instagram. And you guys seem like you're living your best life, and that's really all. All you know matters. Yep, um, I agree. I think you're a little frozen there on the screen, but that's okay. I agree. But um, damned internet. Yep. But um, yeah, so. So, how you been? How have things been going? Um, I've been doing good. I mean, you know, pan, you know, like pandemic down, uh, May, you know, um, you know, all of that. I am aside. I've been doing um, um, uh, well. It's um, what you said. It's going to air on uh, Sunday. We we just learned to uh, day that some more more uh, restrictions have been uh, lifted in this uh, state. So, you know, we're getting back to, you know, semblance of um, uh, normal. So things are looking up. Yeah, uh, that is definitely true. Uh, things are finally getting back together in North Carolina. So, um, so so that they, uh, my, my viewers can get to know you a little bit. Um, tell me about yourself. Uh, like, um, what are your likes, your dislikes, any kind of hobbies you got? Um, of course, I mean, I, I know stuff, but they don't know stuff. And, you know, let's let's get them to know you, since this will also be our, like, our beginning stages of our uh, channel and stuff. Oh, yes. Well, of course, you know, you know um, I like long walks in the um, – um, uh, Beach, handcuffs, leather, lots of leather, spanking. Oh, you mean just in general life? Okay. Um, well, all of that aside, um, can you uh, still hear me? The screen sort of went blank. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Okay. okay, everything seems. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, I, 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 I oh oh yes. Um, as far as hobbies go, I'm an avid movie uh, buff. I read quite a um a bit. Uh, I uh, sketch. Uh, I um um a sketch write. Um, yeah, that's as far as hobbies go. I play golf every uh now and I am uh, again. Um. Yeah, and um, I've recently got back into uh, writing, so a few things uh, bouncing around there as far as work. I work in the um, uh, you know um, uh, legal field, so it's your typical nine to five, Monday through um, uh, uh, um, uh, Friday. And when the world is normal, you know, I like to after work, you know, just go, you know, go and hang hang out. I love to go to uh, restaurants, bars, and especially uh, theaters. Because like I said, a huge movie buff, so I'm always down to go to uh, theaters. Um, I love that it's becoming more and more common to have those. Um, they all tend to have different names, but those studio movie grills where you can have like, an actual meal while you watch, you know, a um, um, a film. Yeah. One of the last things I got to see in theaters yeah. was the Guy Ritchie, uh, um, the uh, gentleman with um, uh, Matthew McConaughey and. Charlie Hum, I think is how you say his last name. And I had like a full meal and drink while having, you know, Matthew McConaughey team up with British gang uh, gangsters. It was great. Yeah. Um, those, I've been to a few of those before. But um, they're definitely a different experience. They are. They are. It's great. But the best experience I've had in one thus far is the not the most Godzilla, the God, the Godzilla v Kong, but the Godzilla King of the Monsters. Uh, I went to see that in, and it was just me and a co a, and a coworker at the time who also was enough of a Godzilla fan that when things would happen in the film that would reference older films. Uh, you know, like we were able to like be like, oh, they did the thing, or you know, Ghidorah made that sound and stuff. And we could like actually chat and and, a, and again, we just kept ordering drinks because we were the only ones there. So it was like having a private screening, but that was like that was fun. Yeah, um, yeah, I I understand. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, the last. I've probably only been to one of those places at least only once that I recall. And that was uh, to see The Force Awakens because I had already seen it so many times that I was able to watch oh, yeah. it and yeah. eat and not be distracted. So, and plus, you know, that was back in our youth. I mean, that's been six years. So, yeah, I'm probably doing yeah, much better. I was. I think you and I saw The Force Awakens twice together because we saw it just you and I, and then and then I believe we went back with some with you know someone else because we um, I was still trying to make up my mind on how I felt on it, um, and then you know we saw it the second time with someone else. Um, yeah, I know one of those studio movie groups would have helped for the rise of Skywalker because that was another one I could have kept drinks. And maybe that process would have went down smoother. Oh, trust me, no amount of drinks in the oh, world would have made that. I was not the biggest fan of that one. Oh, I like at least the the people who are watching this know my opinion on the rise of Skywalker. Like, I went on an entire rant on how that movie just like took the corpse of my childhood and just like sent it through the meat grinder. Like, oh my lord, like. I, I just I the was, one thing I will say positive. Yeah, the one positive thing I will say about the rise of Sky Skywalker is I do think that it has one of the best moments in the entire franchise so far. Um, it has most worst moments, but it has one moment that I put up there with the best, and it's when that moment of like all hope is lost. And you hear Lando say that he's here, 
And throughout the entire franchise, you 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 only get the Star Wars main theme at the at the beginning, crawl, and during the credits. And throughout the film, you get bits of it, but it's never played in full. And the moment Lando shows up and all of the other ships with, with, with him, that music just plays throughout that whole scene. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time in the, in the film franchise that they just let the theme play through a scene. And I do like that. I think that moment is up there. It's right up there with, you know, Han coming out of nowhere and um, Star Wars or, or, you know, A New Hope, depends on how much of a purist you are about the title of that film. But I think that moment is right up there with Han coming back and saying, kid, let's blow this and go home. Um, but yeah. I think it's about the only positive that I have for, for that one. Now, I do like the moment in Rise <laughs> Wasted. Where Ray hears all the voices of all the former Jedi. I do like that. That is pretty much the only moment in that movie that I like. Yep, all the rest of it. Yes, except for when you hear. Yeah, it, yeah, except for when you hear Anakin go, you know, bring balance, like I did. Like, but shut up, fool. Yeah, I don't know, but um. So, you, you obviously, well-dressed fellow there, um, you made upstage me significantly, me and my Punisher shirt, but, um, yeah, like... Yes, but you have a snazzier chair. Oh, that is very true. My beloved wife uh, decided for my birthday to get me this cool Spider-Man chair, so... I like it. It's pretty good. Oh, it's I can't good. even see the Spider-Man. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, it is. It is it back right? arch support. Yeah, and it has the eyes and everything. Oh, oh that is really cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, but yeah, um, I know I definitely want us to collab on my movie show which I guess this is the first time I'm announcing that on my channel I am going to have a movie show where we will talk a film or maybe a series of films or whatever each episode. But I have another show that's a fandom-based show where it might be just a certain aspect of a certain fandom, like maybe a theory or whatever it is. But, um, or just, just anything like it doesn't have to be movies. It can be TV, comic books, car, uh, cartoons, uh, video games, anything like that. It doesn't have to just right like the movie show obviously is about movies and, um, uh, but the fandom show can be about anything. So if you're more, you're more than welcome to come on that anytime, like there will be certain episodes that I have that are going to be scripted because if I'm writing it out, I need to know exactly what points I'm going to make in the video. If it's oh, course, a one-on-one yes. -on -one thing, because I know how my brain works. So, but that will only be like a once a month type of thing. And then the yes. other three weeks, weeks, weeks will be the content. There will be no content for the uh, the show on uh, the movie show. I know you and I talked, and I think we're going to start with the Daniel Craig James Bond movies to go with the timeline. Yeah, and yeah, I think they are the most you know they are the most accessible at the uh, moment. Too. I mean, it's it's what's fresh in everyone's mind. You know, when you like, yeah. And when most people say Bond, brain either goes to Sean Connery or whoever the most current is. So I think for most people, you say Bond is, you know, Daniel Craig. Yeah, and then uh, so what I want to do is I want to talk about the four movies, each one episode. So the four weeks in June, we'll talk about those. 
and then I want to start some other movies, and then we'll jump to Sean Connery's Bonds, and then I don't know the list of Bonds. I know Roger Moore is in there, and uh, mm -hmm. you you have uh, Sean Connery, um, uh, Lazenby, Roger uh, uh, Moore, Dalton. Brosnan and uh, Connery. I mean, yep, Brosnan and Craig. Yeah. So that will probably be the order that, and then we're hopefully we can get it to where we run into 25 whenever the time comes, but um, all according to mm -hmm. how this goes. But um, I haven't planned that far ahead. Uh, unlike. <laughs> The Supernova Show, which I plan out every single week and have for the rest of the year, I have not done that for uh, our movie show because I need some input. So what are some movies in the off weeks like that you like, that you really want to talk about, that maybe I've never seen? It might be a movie that I've never seen. If it's a movie I've seen, then we can... Have a discussion about it. it. It makes me revisit it. But I have this handy dang uh, pen here, and I have this awesome notepad or whiteboard. Um, so yeah, like if there's any any movies, or in the inverse on the fandom show, if there's any like things you want to talk about there, that any like books, comic books, uh, movies, TV shows, oh, any of that. I mean. And what's sort of funny, too, is, like, you know, with James Bond, there's been, of course, it started with books, it went to films, there's been comics. Uh, there's a cartoon show, James, uh, James Bond Jr., that covers all aspects, but outside of that particular um, uh, um, uh, fandom, I think there's a lot of merit to many of the um, uh, Godzilla films. Um, ex uh, um, especially the very first one, there there's a lot of deeper meaning to that first one than it's given credit for. Um, I, you know, I um, I'm such a film buff that my DVD Blu-ray uh, collection goes from films from the 20s to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, present. I think you know, if we're talking like um, or something to be said for. Uh, so, um, uh, Nosferatu being, you know, not only the first proper adaptation of um, uh, Dracula, it was one of the first just horror movies as we know horror films. Um, it was probably one of the first movies to have a major lawsuit on it, too, because it pulled from Dracula without citing its sources. Um, the Wes Anderson films, like if you're getting really artsy, you, you know, uh, Wes Anderson, uh, stuff like the Grand Budapest um, Ho um, Hotel, which is one of my favorite films. Um, classics such as Bridge on the River uh, Kauai, uh, cool, uh, uh, cool Hand Luke, another one of my favorite films. Um, and then, of course, films that might interest, I think, your core base as it is now. You know, um, I'm always down to talk, you know, uh, star, uh, you know, uh, uh, Star uh, Wars. We've talked briefly about Star Trek, and I have, you know, I've big Star Trek uh, knowledge. Uh, I think a more interesting, you know, uh, you know, uh, films that are kind of more modern because I know my, you know, my films tend tend, tend to be like sixties, seventies, and eighties. Um, but um, but I but you know, I think it's a good start. I would love to talk about. The, all of the Batman films, because we've had what ninety-seven Batman at this uh, point. Um, yeah, uh, any, anything with yeah, Gary, uh, anything yeah. with Gary Oldman in it. Yeah, I definitely want to one day hear your opinion on Zack Snyder's Justice League because I don't. Think I've talked to you about it specifically because I knew that we were doing this entire thing. Or that I would want to talk to you about it eventually. Yeah, I have very specific like a uh, like um, opinions on not only Zack Snyder's Justice League, but the Zack the Snyder verse at large. You know, um, I have opinions on that, and uh, um, 
what it might have built on like correctly from what came before it and where it kind of went you know um astray what went and you know but, but it's all by you know um, personally uh, opinion of, uh, you know um you know of um of course um not to spoil anything but i was not a big fan of zack snyder's watchman which a lot of people like i did not i'm someone who loves watchman that's a book that i might read once a year if not at least once every other year watchman so it's something that i really love uh, and so yeah i wasn't a, I, I was not a fan of the zack snyder film watchman because i think it the the visuals were uh, there but i think it missed the, those characters in many ways so have you watched the series because i have not had the chance to yet I have watched the uh, series, and I really enjoyed the series for what it was as a sequel to the book. It has nothing to do with the Zack Snyder film. It it takes the text of the book and is a sequel of that, and builds upon stuff that is that that is that you know uh, book. And I and I and and I really liked it. Um, there, I, I I didn't agree with every choice, but as a whole, I, I thought it was fantastic. It was one of the most cast shows I've seen in a while. Um, I'm saying a lot because there's some great shows out, out, out there now that are just pitch perfect in uh, casting. Okay. Um, so I'm going to drop to the back for just a few minutes and I'll just. Talk about what you okay. are, because i got to answer the phone real quick. Talk about just films that I, I like. Uh, right. yes. Well, um, as far as films that I like, as I mentioned earlier, huge film, uh, uh, a huge film um, uh, buff going from the 20s to, no, um, um, uh, to, um, to, um, from the 20s to uh, now, sorry, I've got a stutter if it isn't already uh, um, uh, obvious. But um, of course, I like I was raised on action and horror films. My my father loves a good action film, so of course, growing up, all of the Arnold films, um, Sylvester uh, Stallone films. My parents didn't really care about the rating; they would let me watch a film and say, "Would well, you don't say this at school." Don't say this word. Don't say that word. In fact, just don't mention that we let you watch this film, but enjoy. And my mom was a big horror film buff. So I, you know, if it wasn't an action film, there was the horror film. And that's kind of where my love of James Bond comes from. Um, I was watching those with my um, uh, father and learning also that um, my grandfather watched them with my father when he was young. So it's sort of this uh, familial thing that's passed down in you know, um, uh, my family and both of my parents love classic cinema. Um, my mom is a big Betty Davis fan, uh, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford fan. So those classic films, um, like, uh, like uh, whatever happened to uh, Baby Jane, the original Mildred Pierce with uh, Joan um, uh, Crawford. My father just loves a good classic film, uh, Citizen Kane. Um, him and I recently watched uh, *Mank*, the Netflix picture that was, was the sort of the behind-the-scenes story of um, um, uh, the behind-the-scenes story of um, uh, *Citizen Kane*, and I thought that was great. Um, I do. Speaking of like anything with Gary Oldman is usually good. Um, from *Mank* to you know *The Fifth Element*, the uh, professional for his uncomfortable as that movie can be would be if i had a top 20 it would be in the top 20 um is this great performances in it um of course i love the god the uh godzilla films um a movie that i've i watched it many years ago and forgotten about it um and recently re like rewatched it and it's moved way up on my just list of favorite film is um uh whiplash with um uh his name escapes me um j uh j jonah jameson um it'll hit me later i'll probably be driving and his name will hit me um 
but yeah, uh, J.K. Simmons, J.K. Simmons, that's, that's who I'm looking um, uh, for. That is a really good movie and uncomfortably funny. You laugh for the wrong reasons. Um, the uh, Grand Budapest Hotel is one of my favorite films. It's, um, also, uh, Birdman with uh, Michael Keaton. And those are more modern films that I uh, like. I'm trying to vamp while Colton's on here and not be completely dull. Um, as far as horror films, um, I, the A Nightmare on Elm Street series is my favorite horror series because more so than most horror films, it can be just as imaginative as the budget allows. And the only downside of that series is they usually had very small budgets, um, but they were as ingenious as they could be. Um, <clears throat> some of the, there was spinoff novels from that series that I have. And when you don't have budgets, because it's in a book, you know, it's all in your mind. Uh, there, there's some very creative stuff that you can do with a character like Freddy Krueger, who, you know, who exists in the realm of, um, uh, in the realm of, um, you know, um, uh, dreams. Um, a guilty pleasure horror series for me <clears throat> is the uh, is the um, uh, Leprechaun films with um, uh, Warwick Davis. Um, they are guilty pleasure films because I I like them, but as I'm watching them, it's running through my head. Why do I like this? Why is he in space? Because they did they Leprechaun in space. Um, all of the ones with Warwick Davis have something to them. They've done. They did uh, WWE produced a um, a re a uh, reboot that I didn't care for, and there was a there was a soft sequel slash reboot done for the Sci Fi Channel not too long ago, and it was all it was all right, but it was missing kind of the charm that the um, it was missing the uh, charm that the early movies had. Sorry, I had to fix my collar. Um, um, as far outside of films, as far as like uh, television shows, um, a good British drama will get me out. Uh, Broadchurch was such an amazing series, especially the first two. Uh, Wallander was an amazing series. Um, as far as sitcoms, uh, Community is one of my favorite shows that's ever been put on um, a t you know um, a TV um, the Jeffersons uh, all in the family which are uh, connected um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air and Family Matters I have a nostalgic love for um, Columbo I love Columbo just the way that um, uh, Peter you know Peter Falk would seemingly be this bumbling uh, detective then just come in with his cigar and beige suit and raincoat with his one more thing and then he's picked on one tiny thing to solve an entire crime and the guest star like um having rewatched a lot of that show recently it's just a who's who of like 70s and 80s talent um you had episodes like leonard uh nimoy was a guest star um shatner guest star you had a couple of people from the Bond series made guest the appearances. There's an amazing episode about a crime centered around wine that, that has Donald Pleasance, who was in everything and a legendary actor, you know, from The uh, Great Escape. He was Blofelt. The first time you see Blofelt's face in the Bond series, it's Donald Pleasance. And then, of course, had his own, like, second, like, wind as Dr. Loomis in the uh, Halloween franchise. And I mean, he just kept playing that character. He would he would come back every time. And despite the yo-yoing quality of a lot of those films, he always brought his A game. Like he was all just a classically trained actor that would bring it every time. Um, I, and I love British comedy as well. Um, the dry wit and humor. Um, the uh, Cornetto trilogy with Simon Pegg and Nick uh, Frost, the Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End. Those are three films that I can, like, 
I could watch them any day of the week. They never get old, and I love all three of them. That's a weird series where um, my favorite one just tends to be whichever one I'm watching at the moment. Like, if I'm watching Shaun of the Dead, I'm like, this is the best one. I'm watching The World's End. I'm like, no, this is the best one. And same with Hot Fuzz. There's just whichever one I'm watching happens to be my favorite. Um, Alan Partridge, which is never got big here over here, but if you can find it, there's clips on YouTube. If you have HBO Max, um, one of the Alan Partridge shows is on there. It's very much worth checking out if you like British uh, comedy. Um, there's even a movie that currently is on YouTube for free with ads. Um, Colton's back. Okay. Hey, I'm back. Ramping about random media. Yeah, you did a uh... oh, different ten chorus stars to. I mean, hey, you gotta gotta do what you gotta do, I guess, to uh, keep yourself entertained. But yeah, I used to be a public speaker, so I can feel dead, you know, dead, you know, dead air with just useless crap that I know. Yeah, um, yeah, something came up, and I'm so glad you're able to talk because I am not that way. I can absolutely not talk just forever by myself. Yeah, like, I know when we had originally planned, or I thought, oh, we'll do it from 6.30 to 6.45, and then I'll just have to vamp for 15 minutes. And I was like, oh, what am I going to talk about before the, my other guests get here? But guess what? We don't have to worry about that. But whenever we're done, uh, then we're just done. Oh, yeah, because I can vamp. Yep. That's good. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, so far, I have Godzilla, Batman, and Dracula on my list here. So that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, there's so many versions of Dracula too that you can talk about from Nos from the uh, Nosferatu to uh, Bela Lugosi, which for a long time set the standard of what Dracula was. To then you had Christopher, the amazing Christopher Lee. Um, in those hammer horror films that even there's some films where he never says a single line, but he's so like just talk to him and like you can't take your eyes off of him too. I mean, get, I brought Gary Ullman up a few times. Um, the Bram Stoker's Dra Dracula in 1992 where he's Dracula. Like, yeah, there's so much to like mine from Dracula because it's a character in the public don't like domain. Anybody can make a Dracula film, and it seems like everybody does. Um, hell, just for you know, laughs, we should go out and make a Dracula film. Post on the channel. They can't sue us. It's public dom domain. I mean, I'm I'm down. I'll, I'm, I hope you're right. We, totally, we can... Yeah. Oh yeah, I already have a cape for totally non-sexual purposes. Good, good. Um, that's that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I've missed all that insanity. It's it's been a long time since we hung out. It has. It's been it has because right when we had like right when we made plans to do something is when like the world sort of fell apart for eighteen months. Yeah, so, um, I can't even remember what the what the plans were, but it was like the next week is when you see on the um, um, uh, news. Oh, um, you might want to stay home. It might be best. To, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, like, have you ever did you watch the Witcher series on? Um, Netflix? Uh, yes, the Henry Cavill, yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a second season of that coming. Yes, so that is one thing I would want to talk about, but I also would want to talk about the books and how they relate to the show at some point, but um, that really just depends um, on how that goes. But yeah, there's that, and then there's... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've not yet read those books, but I've wanted to, and I know... It's a it's a video game too. Yes, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, because like I thought I've seen it as a game as well. Um, 
gaming is something I used to do in just, you know, adult life sort of, you know, ha you know, like happened. And I'll pick up a game every now and again, um, especially if it's like, a, you know, if there's a new James Bond game, which we haven't had one of those in a while. There's one coming. There's one uh, piping from the same creators that did the Hitman series. Um, and I love those games. I don't know what that says about my personality, but I love uh, games. Um, that'd be a neat thing. Like if, like, like, if we ever cover games, like, that's weird little side knowledge I have is, like, stealth action games where they hit, you know, Hitman, Splinter Cell, um, well, Metal I mean, Gear Solid. That could work in our games that I just so, so as long as, uh, essentially, it's anything that... If if I can find a way to participate in the show, then it's fine. If not, then you can run the entire thing just like you just did for that ten minutes or whatever, however long it was. And uh, yeah, so yeah, like I don't mind. And then when content dries up and. And we're just just you know, and we're just discussing uh you know uh sh you know um uh Shakespeare. So let's talk about Hamlet. Okay. So Which um I, 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 yeah. All right, so unfortunately a person is calling me back. So you go on your rant again. For just a few I, I, since I'm mostly here to talk about Bond, I'll sort of pivot towards uh, Bond and that series because that's sort of where this all got started. Is I'm a huge Bond fan. I mentioned earlier from book, films, the games. Um, the, the there's been off and on comic series for since before the films because it ran as a comic strip uh, before that. But that's a lot of what Colton and I were talking about was me coming in and talking about the Bond series, um, the Bond film uh, series, uh, starting with the uh, Daniel Craig films, which I quite like. Um, I'm there's Bond fans seem to be put into different groups of whether they prefer like the more gadgety, funny Bond, the more lighthearted Bonds. Um, you got especially with the like the middle of the Roger Moore film, um, uh, and then you have uh, those that like the very serious Bonds, like the early Connery, Dalton Craig, um, and I tend to fall into that camp. I my favorite Bond film and book is From Russia with uh, Love, and as far as the films go, that's one of the few where you can take out all of the Bond elements um you know the the gun barrel the opening song uh you could even change the main character's name um and it still plays a spy thriller and that's what i love about it is it doesn't rely on the bond tropes but to be fair when that film was made it was only the second one um we didn't have the bond tropes um the series was still learning still had an eye on cock and movies such as North by Northwest. Um, and of course, that's my favorite. So I've really enjoyed uh, the Daniel Craig era that we're in now um, for being a bit more serious, for having more spy thriller elements. That's not to say the films have not been without their faults, because they're, you know, um, for every up, there's a down. Um, and that's sort of how this area, but I believe that the ups have far outweighed the downs. Um, except for maybe the the little spin that on the Blofeld character that was that was a pretty big down. Um, but but we'll get there because I think the intent is to speak on each film from you know uh, Casino to Quantum, Skyfall, Spec you know Spectre. Then if my presence on this channel hasn't cleared all of the viewers out. Uh, we'll get to no time to die. Hopefully, in no in uh, October, I think is when it's supposed to come out. Now the film's been delayed several several times. Um, 
but ho ho but hopefully we'll get it then and if i haven't dwindled the viewership down we'll be able to discuss it then um but yeah um i grew up with bond it was a connection to my father and i and then um it sort of grew because i was i mean i i was a kid at the perfect time for that to hit because bond had been dormant since 89 um i'm 30 i was born in 91 um but um the series had been dormant since 1989 so in 95 and back, it was an event um my father bought a surround sound when go came out on vhs and i had never experienced a surround sound we just you know that's back when tvs weighed 900 pounds um and had built-in shelves um you know you had to plug in your you know white yellow red cake uh cables um and to set up a sound system was you know you had all of these frayed cables that went everywhere yeah that's how it was kids and we had these tapes that had to be rewound um there were special ma machines to rewind a vhs tape ah Nostalgia just hit. Um, but yeah, like uh, my father got a surround sound, just watch GoldenEye on VHS. And of course, with that came the GoldenEye game, which is a see and a brand unto itself. Um, yeah, like GoldenEye has almost become its own, its, its, its own thing. Um, but yeah, so like I was just a kid at the right time because there's GoldenEye. James Bond Jr. was no longer running as a new show, but the local vi uh, video store, there's another thro throwback, uh, the, the uh, local vi uh, video store carried the James Bond Jr. VHS tapes where you get like three episodes on um, a tape. Um, so like there was that, um, uh, and of course, just the games kept coming with, with each new film. There was a new game, um, and even like some spin-off games of that time. Um, and of course, the Brazen era was sort of we had gotten back to like the fun bonds. So it was it, it was an easy entry as a kid to get into this uh, series at that time. Not say that Brazen wasn't serious, but there was still the gadgets were a big deal. Um, but like like you know the Bond watch, my my love of watches definitely comes from the Brosnan era of Bond, where, where he always had a gadget-laden watch, whether it had a, you know, Piton and, uh, and uh, you know, a repel ga uh, gadget in it, um, in a laser watch. Um, she was a gadget I'd love to have for no reason. I would just get in trouble with it. Just laser everything, um, like, Oh, the door's locked. Is it? Uh, you know. Oh, my. Oh, my coffee is gone. Old. Is it? Laser the coffee. Um, you know. The dog won't stop barking. Willie. No, I would never laser a dog. Um, but yeah. Um, so I just, you know, it just the stars kind of like um, AI aligned on that one, and um, like I said it was. Way to connect with my father. It was for my father. It was a connection to his father. So it's this uh, familial thing uh, when my grandparents would visit. It would be a thing that my father, myself, and my grandfather would do is we'd all gather around and just pick one of the VHSs. Um, my grandfather really liked the Roger Moore era, you know, uh, era of Bond. So I know two we seemed to watch a lot was uh, Live and Let Die and The Man with the Golden Gun. Um, just ironic because my grandfather kind of looked like a character in those films, J.W. Pepper. Um, if you've seen the films, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't seen the films, we'll get into that. But he's a, uh, Louisiana, um, uh, parish officer, um, kind of a portly man, um, very spews a lot of not politically correct things, even then. Like, it's not one of those things, like, you can't go back and say it hasn't aged well. It, it was, you know, 
it was not appropriate at the time, but that was sort of the point of that character um, was to be kind of a bumbling person to be laughed at. But yeah, my my grandfather slide style sort of resembled the character. So yeah, it was just a big part of my family. All um, right. So I, I am back, right. but uh, I know we've been going for a while and I'm sure you got to get going soon. So uh, I think so. And uh, my dinner is going to be ready in a few minutes. So I'll get to eat that before we start the next session. So that would be great. But um, yeah, like, thank you for being on. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah. I will definitely. Pleasure. You. Hopefully I haven't brought the viewership down. Uh, that's my goal is to bring it up and not down, but we'll see. Yeah. And I'm going to have to watch all of this uh, when it's posted to see what you talked about. So I can write it on my board because man, did I not hear any of that, but um, that's okay. But um, I normally good. ask my guests during the, the farewell thing. Do you have anything like, interesting that's going on in your life that you would like to plug i don't know if you have twitter or instagram that you're cool with people knowing if you're not we'll just ignore this part of the segment and we'll just go on to the outro oh no i do i know i do have an instagram i just cannot remember the name because i like like i mentioned er, like uh er, like earlier i'm 30 and i've hit that point where like i just Whatever's new, I don't know how to work it. Um, give me one second, and I will plug the um, Instagram. Uh, yeah, that's yes, why I, it's, um, yeah. I keep my Twitter handle in my name. My Twitter handle. Right. Yeah. I see that would have been a smart thing to uh, do. I um, Insta is. Um, is um, uh, Kim Dustin? It's my. It's just my last name and my first name, and it it won't shock anybody to you know that's listened to all of this that it's a lot of James Bond stuff. Yes, it is, and it's a lot of like uh, food. If you're into that, and also oh, food because I'm because I'm sort of an uh, amateur chef bartender. Oh, and. Kim is spelled K E M, just for future reference to anyone oh, who tries yes. to find him. Um, I'm sure it was in the box. Yeah, uh, it, it was K E M D U S T I N. Yep. At least that that one's on the screen, so they can see that. But um, yeah, in your part. But um, yeah. So thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and move you to the back and then we're going to outro this thing and then bring back in myself whenever the rest of the crew gets here. Sound like a plan? All right. Yeah. Great. All right. And, uh, Hey, supernova audience. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, welcome back everybody. Um, uh, for you, it's only been a few seconds, but for, for me, it's been uh, about an hour and a half since I saw you last. Uh, we filmed the first part a little while ago with Mr. Dustin Kim uh, discussing uh, my channel and all that stuff and his ventures uh, on it So uh, and all that stuff. So that's good, but uh, welcome back to the 20th episode of the Supernova Show. That's, that's really exciting. All right. Ah. Number 20. Who knew? Starting at the beginning of January that we'd be here. But yeah, it's a, it's a good time. I can't complain. It's, this is always a good show. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the week. And I got two great cast members today. I got Amaru Moses and Mr. Robert Kastner. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and bring out Mr. Amaru Moses and we'll get it on. So, so how you been, brother? I'm good. Every time you say cast members, I'm like, yes, cast, Cashner. Cashner would be a cast member. I just I always, I always chuckle a little bit whenever you say that. Um, I'm tired. There's, there's, it's, it's the longest three weeks ever because school is now two weeks away from being done, and every day is long, but the weeks are short. If that makes any sense. Uh, yeah. And the drive home today, like I had energy, and then. The farther away I drove from work, 
the less my energy was, and I am tired. Yeah, um, yeah, it, I I completely understand. Like the longer, the closer it gets to summer, I think to myself, "Ooh, the kids will be home every day." That means I'm going to be even more tired. Actually, I hope that they exhaust themselves while I'm at work, so that I won't be as tired. But it probably won't happen because children, for some reason, have an unlimited energy source that apparently, when you're like 25, you just run out of. But yeah, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, I remember uh, as a child, my brother would always take a nap. I'm like, why are you napping? I know now because they're they're glorious. Naps are yeah. naps are amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, until they, you fall asleep and it's like 13 hours later. and then Yeah, I don't take hour naps anymore. That doesn't work. If I go to sleep in the middle of the day, it's a three-hour thing. Yeah, um, I, I try to keep an hour and a half, two hours. But, man, right after my surgery, I was so tired one day that it was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, oh, I'm going to lay down. And my wife, love her to death, she didn't come disturb me. And then it was five, my alarm went off at five thirty in the morning, and I was still asleep. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, "Man, I missed out on dinner and all all this stuff." But it was fine, I guess. I guess I didn't need to eat. But yeah, um, yeah this this episode is going to be interesting. We've had some interesting schmodown development. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Rough for me. Like I didn't get the chance to finish Deception versus uh, Danger Zone because it's as called of, round two in my TV right now. Yep, uh, it was on my phone whenever you came in, so I took it off, but um, so that I wouldn't have to use Wi-Fi and my data wouldn't just like burn up. But yeah, uh, that was interesting. The show last week. Uh, between Damon and Demolanza was interesting. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't think they're having anything tonight. I haven't got any, like, Patreon mm, links. Or anything, no, so. not till next week, I don't believe. Yeah. So, yeah. This is going to be a very, very interesting uh, week. We get, to, we get to talk about some stuff. But, um, how, how did uh, your show go? I... It was it was fun. It was it was really fun. Um, the the uh, MFR quota was definitely hit. Um, there was a lot of MFRs because Sam Jackson was one of the choices. Um, people yelled at me for getting rid of Morgan Freeman last. First, I mean, because uh, if you the the winners were if you didn't pick Sam Jackson, you pick Morgan Freeman. Uh, it was a very difficult show, a difficult list. I, I mean, difficult list. Great show, difficult list, but a lot of fun, a lot of cursing. Uh, a lot of new uh, memes and gifs and videos that I got to use that I'll be using a lot uh, for future episodes. Um, and uh, if you look out for the hit next week or this coming week, uh, it'll be a uh, brand new topic I've never we've never talked about before. Not movies, not music, or television. Ooh, very interesting. I uh, can't wait to see that. I will totally, absolutely uh, check that out. See if I have any idea what's going on um but yeah um yeah i need to watch that because yeah i think samuel L. jackson is probably my choice of who to keep yeah. out of my entire group but um man morgan freeman getting rid of first that's i i i i caught on to seven and shawshank as adult so like if I would have caught onto it and loved it as a kid, it wouldn't have been Morgan. But Shawshank and Seven, they just they they did. I didn't watch Shawshank until for the first time until about like four or five years ago. And Seven, I always saw in bits and pieces until I was an adult, so it didn't hit me how amazing those two movies are as as much because I haven't been able to like rewatch them yet. So uh, yeah, and and all the other ones just have some movies that I I, I would rather keep around or, or shows. That I'd rather keep around more than, than what Morgan's done. So, yeah, okay, I I can understand that. I can I can fully understand that. But um, yeah, I I can't wait to see what you got going on. I'm gonna move you to the back and bring out Mr. Robert Castor. 
What's up, Robert? Fly, fly away. The week is done. So fly away to your weekend, I say. Oh, yes. Um, so, how you been? How have I been? I've been glorious. I've been... It's right smack dab, even though we had a March Madness tournament in March, as the name suggests, and a little bit of April. Uh, I, I am knee-deep in tournament time for trivia stuff, and that continues until I decide not to take things as seriously anymore, which won't happen. So uh, you all were talking about <laughs> things in the Schmodown that happened during the week, and I'm like, meh, I got other stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, um, I watched your match versus, you know, Supernova Show cast member Mr. Anthony Tisdall before I uh, uh, came on to my first, the part one of the show. I watched that. And uh, that was something. We'll mm -hmm. talk, we'll definitely talk about that once we get to the fan league parts. Well, we'll uh, see. And then I'm trying to remember. Didn't your match with Anto your mat your team match with Antonio that dropped? Uh, I forget when Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, I cannot. Is, what's your guys' name? God mode or something? God mode. If yep. you look it up, it looks like Doom writing, which is freaking awesome. I didn't yeah, realize they uh, would do that. And I was just like, yes. That's cool. But um yeah, so yeah, it's been a it's been a very interesting week. Uh a very interesting week for our country. Uh all Oh yeah, so you're talking about the notice now that uh for the most part we can get rid of masks if you're fully vaccinated. Yep. Unless you're uh like, unless your place of employment still requires it, and then you have to wear masks. Why? Well, <laughs> or I or, or uh, stores. Like, I I went to a food lion today, which is a grocery store in North Carolina, mm. and they still require it. So, Of course. No, I, I'm saying that semi-facetiously because I think, for me anyway, uh, based on the fact that even if we're fully vaccinated, and I don't want this to be like a... a armchair Fauci hour, but even if you're fully vaccinated, you can still hold the disease like in your nose and it could still be transmitted to uh, the elderly. Yeah. To anybody who's not fully vaccinated or anybody else who might be at risk. So I think for me, I'm going to keep a mask in my pocket, like a wallet, like from th this point on, and I'll just use it in situations, you know, like, like if I'm with family that I know is fully vaccinated, I probably won't use it as much. I probably won't feel as uh, concerned, but in the general public, I'm definitely going to keep keep a mask. Yeah, uh, that's what I do every single day, is I have a my wallet in my right pocket and my mask in my left pocket, and I feel like an awful human being whenever I accidentally put on the wrong pair of pants, yep. uh, and then my wallet's not in my pocket, and my mask is not in my pocket, and I'm driving most of the time, but luckily enough, I have masks in my truck and I've memorized my driver's license number. So there if I get go. pulled over, I still have it. <laughs> yeah, if I get pulled over, I'm good, and it, I I have masks, so I'm not a butthole to other humans. So no, I I think it just shows general caring for your fellow man, which I think everybody we need, and it's it's getting better for that, which is good for the most part. Uh, by the way, I had a story that you were based on what you were talking about with uh, Amaru in relation to naps. I remember when I was abroad, when I was studying abroad, when I was 20, by the way, all comes full circle. It's 20th episode when I was 20. I was in Denmark, and uh, it was the night of the Steelers' last Super Bowl win. And uh, in Denmark, that meant that the game ended at like 4 or 5 in the morning, and I had class at like 7 or 8. And I was staying with a family that was like half hour or so out of town by train, to me, it didn't make any sense to go home, so I just stuck around, and I kind of like wandered the streets like a weird uh, vagrant until it was time for uh, class. And I only had the one class, so I went home, uh, and I passed out, and I passed out till like dinner time. Actually, I think I slept past dinner time because I was drunk, and I, I passed out. And uh, my, fa my host family was like, no, nah, we didn't want to wake you. Or we tried to, but it didn't work. And I was like, cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
But that's uh, those are I have many many stories where I fell asleep in places I shouldn't have for longer than I shouldn't have, and um, hilarity ensued, and that was one of them. Yeah, um, I agree. I mean, I've definitely in my youth slept in my truck and had cops knock on my window and be like, "You okay?" Thinking I'm a drunk dude, but as soon as I roll down the window, I'm just like, "No, nah, man, I'm just really sleepy. Yep. I've been up 48 hours." <laughs> Usually for me, it was on the conveyance of a train, and uh, the train would go all the way to the end of the line, and I couldn't take it back. So I had to figure out ways to return to where I needed to. Most of the time, it was actually walking back, which was great. But, you know, it is what it is. You, you, you deal with the threat of walking alone at night and hope that nothing bad happens. Unfortunately, times that it happened to me, nothing bad happened. That's good. Good. Well, um, let's... Let's start the show and bring it back out. Mr. Amaru Moses. Gamo, let's go. Gamo. All right. So um, let's talk some fan league stuff before we get to the showdown. Okay. Robert, what you got going on? I know you played Anthony, and man, was that a match. Uh, I feel bad for that match. I've said it I, multiple times. I feel bad for it. I don't like to have luck. I know luck is a big part of this, but I don't like to have luck sway so much in my favor because I think it takes away from A, the match itself, B, my feelings about my skill set within the match, uh, and C, just the overall competitiveness. So I, I wasn't... And because it was Anthony's in my faction, I didn't like that we had to play each other in the first round. But the good thing was that it did guarantee that somebody would go forward and fund DMC to round two. And that is exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess... I don't know if anyone cares about spoilers. I have watched the match, but I actually already knew what happened. I just don't know the details up to, like, the, the winner. Uh, so... Okay. I, 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 I know the winner. Okay. Yeah. Um, it sure is something. Like... It, I, I thought round one was really good. Round two, less less so and more so for particular people. Feel, yeah. feel free to talk about it. Don't worry about it. Just go go right on ahead. I'm gonna so, watch it. Anyway. Yeah. Um. I will say my round one. He he took a lead on me. Uh, there were two questions in there that, much like a lot what happens in my life, competing wise, I'm usually between two or three things in my head, and in those situations, I usually pick wrong. And that happened. Uh, the first question right off the bat, I was like, oh, I think this is this move. I think it's probably, you know, this song because it makes a lot of sense given how the question goes. But that it's probably not that. And then it ended up being that. I was like, yeah, all right, fine. Uh, and then it's always uh, who directs Little Shop of Horrors. And I know who directs, but I always like it. It's one of three people. And I always pick the wrong person. I will never forget this again. For everybody who cares, it's Frank Oz. You yeah, you directed Little Shop of Horrors, if you must know. Uh, but I won't forget that. Uh, then, yeah, in the second round, uh, luck favored me. Uh, I, I took a second wheel spin. I got my strength. Uh, I didn't study it as much because I also had a full metal singles match that was air, uh, taping the next day. So I was caring more about deep cuts for that. Uh, but fortunately, what I studied actually paid off, and Anthony got a category that he despises, <laughs> and it showed. Yeah, uh, um, and I felt so bad for him because I was watching it, and I was like, all of these categories I think he's going to be okay with. And then I saw directors on there, and I was like, I was say, it's either Middle Earth or directors, one of the two. <laughs> So I did put a fandom category on for that particular reason. Not that one, but maybe I should have in retrospect. Uh, but yeah, no. He we, wasn't uh, good at MCU, I think. But yeah. man, all those questions, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've never played in multiplex before, but all those questions were so hard. Like, oh my lord. Like, I didn't know a single, single answer in the entire thing. And I'm like, yeah, I can't play, can't do that. Nope. <laughs> well, you're you don't study for for regular Warzone. You're you're a geek player. But if you do study for Warzone, that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you've, uh, I mean, I thought the questions were fairly hard in the Boatman 
um, uh, Mike Hanley match and it's the fill-in. And that was actually a very good uh, 132 match. I would recommend that if you haven't watched it. And then um, probably was Scott, fucking amazing. Scott and <laughs> sorry, I know you don't like cussing. That's good. I liked how you did uh, and then Scott and Brandon went up today. I haven't watched it, obviously, because it went up like right before we started taping. But uh, no, that's a good tournament. And I can't, rec- can't recommend the fandom tournament enough as well. Um, also competing in that one. You will get sick of this face, I promise you, because it's all over the goddamn place. Yeah. Uh, it just so happens. And I'm loving the fandom tournament because it allows me to study without watching movies. You know what, Rue? I feel the same way. That's how I'm taking it. I'm using the additional matches as study points for myself. That's usually how I study a lot of the time anyway, so it works out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Like, I know um, I personally, I have an Ontel singles match. Uh, it's taping next week. Yes. And, oh, my Lord, if I get more than, like, three points, that's the goal. That is the I mean, ultimate with the, with the with the deep cut round. It just kind of allows you to, to be able to like just study your movie, study their movie. You'll get you you can get the fifteen. You just have to really really study those movies. You really do. They're probably when they say deep cut round, Ansel has probably the deepest of deep cut rounds. I would uh, agree with this. There was a Dark Knight question about what school district was the bus at the beginning of Dark Knight. Can can I can I say this? Um, for that match, they used my notes. Those nice. are the notes I took because I, I had to do Dark Knight as well. And uh, I was so thrilled at the questions that they used from my notes. I was like, yes. speaking of th- Speaking of thrilled of questions, I'm very proud of how uh, uh, we, we, me, him, and Antonio basically have a triumvirate of a team now because me and, him, me and uh, Antonio were Gotham Knight before I had to leave. Uh, and they were partners before we were Gotham Knights. And now they're back. Uh, Antonio replaced me with with this man, uh, which is no which replacement. Is de- de- not a replacement, an upgrade, very possibly. Uh, but uh, and and their round two, they did amazing because I wrote that round two, and it's a round two I love. Uh, it's called they did that one other movie. Uh, I actually originally wrote them for Tony's League because Tony likes weird categories, uh, and I basically take actors or actresses like different roles to make you answer that for a separate question. So like, I think the first question was um, something around, or just say Danny Ocean and um, the fantastic Mr. Fox uh, directed what movie with Ryan Gosling? So you have to know Danny Ocean and the fantastic Mr. Fox is George Clooney. And then you need to know what the actual answer to the question is. Uh, Or I think one of theirs was uh, Ramonda and Tina Turner won a best, won an Oscar for, or was nominated for best supporting actress in what, in what movie. So it's like doubly, you need to know who plays those characters and then also know the answer to what movie. Uh, yeah. And, and they killed that one. They killed I it. very much enjoyed that. It's first time in a not Tony league where they had to explain fully what the context of what was going on with the round was uh with the category and i very much enjoyed that category so thank you amaru you really spoke to us with that one yep um yeah so it, it the fan fan leagues they're going great uh ramp it up yep i think my as of today if uh this being sunday everything goes as planned my match with antonio will post sometime today i don't know when but you know this posts at 12 so this will probably post before it so that was a uh, that was quite an adventure i i enjoyed myself thoroughly but um all right let's talk some schmodowns so um uh, right now let's not I'm, I'm not doing too well in the schmodown right now at least my team is not the suspects are getting oh it's hurt. I'm hurting. I'm hurting right now. So, yeah. I take, so I take it Rushmore won that match because I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Even before that, yeah. whatever happened, it was just if a I, lot of we taking some losses. Yeah, it's been hurting. It's uh, hard to it's hard to run the gamut in the schmodown. I mean, I think uh, I think uh, Finstock Exchange really proved that. And on the other side, I think 
corruption really proved that. It's really hard to just be on top the whole way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but as, 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 as much as I'm, I'm, I'm hurting right now about it, I, I got to keep reminding myself, it's literally two months in and eight months to go. Yep. So, yeah. A lot can happen. Yep. Um, but Peggy played Rick, and um, unfortunately, our girl didn't get the win. That was that was like I was watching it the entire time, just cheering, uh, just thinking, yeah. And I was I wanted her to win so bad because you know it's it's our people. Like, yeah. I know we talked last week. Like Rick Radis, he is such a personality. It's it's good, but I will I will say no. I won't. I was gonna I was gonna give him a compliment saying that his trivia looks a little better, and then I realized he got horror again. Yeah, he got, he got horror again, and and it was still down. It was still down by by a lot in round three. I was just like I was trying to telepathically yell John Goodman to Peggy so bad. Just like, oh no, fall into this amazing movie. Go yeah, really on. And I was just like, damn, 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 damn. Because she, she, she was way better in this match than in her in her debut. Um, showed why and, and 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 showed people. Well, she showed people last time because of how she came back. But like anybody who would even thought of doubting was like, no, no, she 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 deserves to be there. Uh, but damn that three and five. Yeah, I mean, she she outplayed him 90% of the match. It's just the end parts are the most important parts, as has been proven time and time again. And she just fell a little bit short. I thought the same thing with John Goodman. I knew, actually got both of their fives, which I was surprised about myself. Uh, I was like, I think it's this, and it turned out to be that. But I could see why you would miss both of those, because actually, you know what? Here's a, here's a, um, like a, a PSA for everybody out there. Uh, Schmodown related. If they ask a question about Pixar, I'm gonna bet you like three to one odds that it will be about the good dinosaur. <laughs> just, I, I just think that's what's gonna happen now. I mean, it's it screwed um, Atchity in a match. Um, Radis had that particular question and didn't get it, uh, but she was really good. I, I just wish she had gotten that first question right off the bat. Then she would get that perfect round. She would have won the match. Uh, I mean, yeah, Radis got horror, and he didn't remember that there's only one movie where John Travolta is in a Stephen King movie, and that's Carrie. It's a pretty big part of Carrie. So, see, if you're a if you if you're a, a horror fan, you definitely should know that. Me not being one, I was like, no, I should not. No, I don't know horror like that. I'm sorry. No, but if that's your strength, and and you've proven to that point that you had been perfect in it. You probably should have got that one. That being said, uh, he he outlasted her, and that stinks, uh, you know, competition wise. But yeah, he is he is a personality, and they're gonna keep putting him up there. I bet uh, as long as he keeps winning. Yep. And then uh, in the main event of that, we had Demolanta versus Damon too, mm -hmm. and oh my lord, like. I have never seen Alex so shaken before. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if it has to do with him coming off the loss with Kalinowski, but and it might be that I don't. I don't know. Like, he gets to go be in the Star Wars tournament, the next one, which that's going to be something. But like, honestly, I think this is the worst that both of them have ever played. Which is saying something because Demolanta only missed three questions, and that's it's definitely the worst that Alex has ever played. But that's for sure. I would agree with that. Did Demolanta play worse in this than he did like against Laura or in the five way? Oh yeah, not the five way. No, wait. I remember watching the five way. Didn't he just miss like his his five or his three and his five? But that was it. Maybe his two. Maybe. That could be the case, but I mean that's that's a you know that's a debut match for everybody as opposed to this one, which is a championship match. So I don't think I don't think apples to apples on this for sure. Uh, but yeah, I when Damon missed the first one in his round two, I was like, well, this match is over. Yeah, and he, that was he just missed that. both. 
yeah, he missed the first two. And you're like, well, this is definitely sunk. It doesn't matter what he does, honestly. It's 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 over. Yeah, like it's it was the most shocked I've ever been watching the Schmodown was how lopsided. I thought we were gonna go into another perfect game. Uh let's go into uh Extra rounds. I thought that's what we were going to. And in the first round, they both missed two questions. I think that's how many they missed. Yeah, it was eight. Like and I was like, oh, oh, wow. And then Damon missed two questions in round two. And I'm like, oh, oh, dear. And I, I, did, I did what I normally do for Star Wars championships. I just wait thinking it's just going to come down to the last match. But I was like, let me pop in real quick. And I heard eight-point lead. And I was like, well, this is done and over with. This yeah. is not turning around. And nobody in the Star Wars division that's that good is giving up an eight-point lead. So yeah. I'm going to continue on with my night. That was a good call. Yeah. And then, of course, um, this week we also had Thomas Harper just run – through someone again like man he he's impressive like i can't wait to see him play demolanta because it's or kelly or Laura kelly that, that's that's the person who's gonna win the tournament right there like unless well, something well, has, has, has the title has shot already yeah she's the title right shot. but he, i guess he'll play the winner of them two demolanta and laura him or Alex, because, uh, I mean, Alex is probably somewhat low-key very mad now, and it's probably going to be like, I'm done with IG for a second. Let me let me go get this belt back. Yeah, and, like, I know me and Amaru were talking before the show that on Sith Council the other day, Christian kind of inferred that the show, the, at least the shows, are going to be in Star Wars next season. Oh my god. Which given that's you know Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch, Resistance, The Mandalorian, that's gonna open up a whole new can of worms. That I think that will be the moment when if Alex doesn't get the belt back this season, that he'll be in contention for it again next season. Because this I is his job. Like that's his job to know all of that stuff. So because I don't see him getting the belt back this season. Not with people like, I think, I mean, he may, he could win the second Star Wars tournament if somehow Thomas uh, Harper wins the belt and then the other two can't be in the tournament for some reason. Uh, but I don't see him, get, if Thomas Harper loses to Demolanto or Laura and goes back into the tournament, I don't see Damon beating Harper. Like I do, uh, I do. I I I don't I don't I don't not. The man was basically went perfect for three years straight, and finally lost it and focused on IG. I, I unless I wouldn't say that until he loses his next match. If he loses his next match soon, then I'm like, okay, he needs to take the year refresh, come back. But like, the first loss wasn't really a loss. The first loss was. Who, somebody blinked, and he just happened to blink. And then he had to do IG. This was his first straight-up loss. And that's still angry Damon after that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait one more loss for it to, before I can say he's not getting that belt. He, I, he, he has him, Harper, Marie, Laura. All four, I will also, depending on how Gold Leader does next week against uh, Marie, I'll also put that man in there because he looks scary his first match. They all have the uh, opportunity to go in there. So, Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would agree with Amaru. I, although I would say I, I had no expectation that the match would emulate the first one. A, because I think that would be semi-impossible to do so. And B, even though I don't think the loss to Kalinowski affected him because I think on some level he probably knew that he wasn't going to be as good as Mike in IG. I think putting that in your studying repertoire 
really did knock away a bit of his Star Wars uh, know-how. And I think, you know, DeLonta has no, nothing else to focus on, really. He just had that one match. I mean, he could do whatever he wanted. So I, I don't think you could count Alex out. I think that would be a fool's play. But I'm not surprised at the result. Uh, I guess just uh, the journey is how we got there because I was surprised he had missed that many questions. Demolanta winning in not overtime in regulation. I'm not surprised at that part. Though. Well, because honestly, I thought it was going to be like another entire thing of them not missing questions. And that's the reason why I'm like, Thomas Harper doesn't miss. I think I've watched some of his Dragon Con stuff and he's never missed a Dragon Con question either. And that gets more extensive than any of the uh, Smodown ever gets. Like, insanely extensive. And he's never... I don't think he's... And I re just realized the Wizarding World has has more movies than Star Wars is going to Wizarding World Division, so I can dominate that. That's what yeah, I think. So I agree. I, so I, I would love that. But it's, it's not going to happen. At least not anytime soon. Do the MCU division, and I'll show up for that one. Yeah. But, yeah, and then uh, the last match of this week that has that we I know the result of, at least, is Lightning Time versus Rushmore. And do you care about spoilers as you've, like... No, I don't. Ethan and Liz should have used the JTE in the last question or they wouldn't have gotten knocked out. But TKO, which hurt because uh, uh, we got opponent's choice. Uh, and they got some they got some 2000s questions that I'm pretty sure Liz and Ethan would have swept. Uh, and there were some uh, – they were hit with and, – and Lightning Time was hit with some really tough classic questions. Very tough classic questions. And, and when that happens, which happens – you're liable to, to get knocked out. Um, but this match has made me think that uh, Roka is right now front runner for comeback player of the year. So far. Um, because this is this this uh, I, I would say JTE as well, but JT isn't coming isn't coming back because he never was like on a downturn, really. He left on high on high, basically. Um Maybe he, I, I think that he had just lost the team's belt, maybe, but like, how many? He had, they had he a had, whole year. The last match he played was the in the tournament in 2017 with Lon for Evil Geniuses, and then he had the accident and he never played again. So, yeah, so I wouldn't consider him a comeback because he was never really on a downturn to me. Like, I, I, I didn't consider it a downturn too much. I think it's how you define comeback, right? Does yeah. comeback mean you were bad and then you're good again? Or does comeback mean you were gone for a while? I mean, like, I hate to... I don't want to, like... It depends <laughs> on what people see it. I, I've always seen it as you've been bad and then you're really good. And I thought Roka had a real down year last year and he is coming on strong. Very much so. Uh, JTE is... Turning out to be the A player of this team. Not uh, surprised about that, actually. Honestly, but, I mean, he always but, had it within him. It was just about whether he could tap into it. What I was going to say was, I didn't want to alienate our fans, our handful of fans that we have, but I was going to say, like, Alex Smith won the comeback player of the year in NFL, not because he was bad when he left, just because he almost died and broke his leg in 13 places and had been gone for two years. And of course, it happened on my team. Yes, and he beat yeah. my quarterback, who had a bad year and came back and was good. So that's how they defined it. So it's all dependent upon how it is that you define things. Yeah, you guys don't want to like exclude your uh, the fans, but I have no idea what you're talking about, and I'll right. just it's the only way I can equate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's that foosball. It's the, it's the foosball yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, uh, American or European? American. Oh, okay. Australian. Oh, all right. Cool. All right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, because uh, what? Uh, Rushmore had a pretty good lead going out of round one, four or five, because uh, JT went perfect again. Um, and then, yeah, that round two just sunk lightning time completely. Uh, 
again, fairly, I'm not going to say easy 2000s because I, I had some difficulty with some of those, but like, I would say comparatively, the 2000s questions were a little easier while still being good, while the classics questions were like, PJ was in his bag for those classic questions. Mm -hmm. Those were like, ooh, you, you, you went in on those. Those are great. Difficult, but great. Yeah, and now that they've won, I want Danger Zone to win tonight's what? match. Strictly because I want to see the war between Dan and uh, Roga. Like, I don't want to say, oh, I mean, he was our guest last week, so let's – I don't want to say, Adam, I hope you lose. But because for the story, again, I'm a huge story person. I think it would be great because they had that entire breakup at Spectacular, and this is their first time at it. And, I mean, we might see him in singles later this year if Roka finishes off this little thing that he's got going on to get to the title at Collision. But – this is going to be their first, their first time. So, since spectacular, Actually, yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what. I I think you know story being what it is. I think talent wise, whether deception or, um, what's uh, what's what's danger yeah. zone. Danger zone. Yeah, either way, I don't, I don't think it'll be a bad match, whoever it is that gets be able to play in it. I think it's just, you know, yeah, it, it, it does make for a more compelling thing when you have bring together all those personalities again as opposed to corruption. But, yep, but, um, of course, like me and Amaru have both watched part of the match, so we'll just, we'll just go with, uh, whatever Robert has said about the entire situation. And I guess uh, if you guys are cool with it, let's move on to movies. I know Amaru has to leave here in a, about 20 minutes. So, um, yeah. All right. So, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone slash the Sorcerer's Stone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, 2001? Yes. Yep. yep. Man, rewatching that, I watched it recently with my kids. They were so young. Like, so young. Oh, my Lord. They And I remember me, like, they're, what, like a year older than me? And I'm like, oh, I was so young back then, too. <laughs> I always mention that I have the same birth date as Daniel Radcliffe. So if I, uh, if I had been born in England, I could have been Harry Potter. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but I'm, an, I'm a year older than them. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's... The funny part is when you think about like the behind the scenes things that I always look for like the thing where uh, uh, Emma Watson had the she could not not voice uh, people's lines when she was a child so she basically was Will Smith in the first season of Fresh Prince yes she she had that problem um, which I, I understand if you're not a normal actor at that point but that's that's what I always look for I always look for the behind the scenes stuff that really I I think I've I've heard that before and I've seen it before, but I don't think I've seen it close enough to any of my watches, so I haven't looked for it. And I'm pretty sure. So now next time I watch them, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna have to look for it. I am I am at a weird point now with Harry Potter though that I have watched them so so much that like I I have not had the urge to rewatch them in a long time. Uh, a long time is probably a year and a half, so not that long. But um, I am at the point where, like, I, I don't, I don't have the urge to rewatch them. I don't need to rewatch them for studying purposes, really. Uh, Fantastic Beast, I do. Fuck those two movies. Uh, uh, but, uh, but Harry Potter, like, I usually it used to be like a once a year, twice a year thing. It's I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm good right now. Um, but if I ever, if 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 I ever just sit down and watch one, it's a wrap. The, the rest yeah. of them are watched a hundred percent. That's how exactly how I feel. Like it's my favorite movie franchise of all time. The first eight, I I don't feel as bad about uh, the other two, the Fantastic Beast movies as you do. But I actually really, I, I like the second one a whole lot, and that's not a very popular opinion. Damn. Because I think it's good, like as a not as a part of the Harry Potter movie universe. I think it's great as a reference to the books. 
because it, it's really like it's J.K. Rowling writing the script. And I know she's not exactly a very popular person, but I've always liked her writing. And I love her book writing. I think she needs to give Steve Clovis the script, the, the screenwriting yes. back and just yeah, give yeah. notes on what needs to happen. I don't think she's a very good script writer. She's her own worst enemy. Uh, I did a trivia thing last night where it said, even today, that uh, kids who read Harry Potter uh, as children uh, grow up with less uh, feelings or thoughts about bigotry which I thought was an interesting corollary considering who it is who wrote them and what we know about her thoughts about certain people. I know in the books, like, obviously it's, it's streamlined so that we're not supposed to feel certain ways about, I, I know she brings it up to the point of us, you know, trying to make sure that we abide by um, not keeping people separated by social classes and race and whatnot. But I just thought that was pretty funny. Uh, speaking of uh, shout out to Alex, Martinez Coronado because he used uh, Crimes of Grindelwald as a deep cut movie in Ontel. It all comes back to that. Hilarious. Making, making Anthony watch it, which is great. <laughs> uh, the one, every time I think about that movie, when I think about how much I hate it, uh, the one part I think about is when they, I think they leave um, Flamel's place and they just somehow wind up at the cemetery. Like they go outside, something happens in the air and then they're just at the cemetery. But there's no explanation as to why it is that they're at the cemetery, like how they got there. They just are like it's. There's no transition. There's no segue. Yeah. It's just there. Somehow, anytime you talk about Harry Potter, the hatred for Fantastic Beasts creeps in. Um, I actually don't hate those movies either. I just think those are the questions I miss in trivia now, and I claim yeah. to be the best at Wizarding World. So when that happens, it makes my hatred for them. Or my not liking them increase, not because of movies. Fair. To get back to, to Philosopher's Stone, yeah. um, this is probably only because of everything else, probably in my bottom two, maybe bottom three of, of the series, of the eight. Yeah. Um, going back to it, it's like the one, uh, these first two are like kids' movies. Here's your kid movie. Take it, take it, children, adults who love the teens who love the stories, uh, the, the, the books. But it's definitely a children's book, but still very good. Um, and it is the fastest. Uh, um, uh, oh, I'm tired. Alan Rickman, thank you. It's the fastest Alan Rickman talks. I, I really want to just get like a counter of how many pauses and how much longer the pauses go movie by movie. Because they get longer. And this one, you're like, oh, he's actually speaking at a at a pace of a somewhat normal human being in this one. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. I think when I first watched it, the one part I was like, oh man, I get they have to cut it. But can we get more for Norbert and the escape of Norbert? Yeah. I would have loved that them trying to get, and it was just like, oh, he, he's just gone and they knew about it. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would yeah, agree. there's some things like as a person who I I read the first book before the movie came out. Wow. So there's some things between the the books and the movie. Like this is the the movie that's the most true to the books. To the book, there is some stuff that's obviously different because you don't want a three and a half hour movie that you're supposed to be marketing towards kids. No kids gonna sit in the theater for that. Trust me, I've tried to watch the Justice League movie with my. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League movie with my sons, they fall asleep an hour and a half into the movie. I, would agree. I mean, it's slow motion in the first two seconds. So, yeah. yeah. Or they get well, bored. Look at like, yelling, breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Ancient but, limitation um, music. But yeah, like, obviously there's things that are different from the book, but that's okay. Like, this one is the least offensive out of, like, of course, like, I could argue that when Quirrell takes his turban off, Voldemort's not supposed to have a nose, and he's supposed to have red eyes. But guess what? In the movie, he doesn't. And it's, you'll, you notice it for, like, three seconds, and then it's gone. And that's okay. I'm, it's fine. It's whatever. But, yeah, like, this is the movie that I was, I remember watching, and 
I was in the third or fourth grade when it came out, and I remember I looked a whole lot like Daniel Radcliffe at that age. Mm. So everyone called me Harry Potter up until I was about 17 years old when I stopped <laughs> looking like him. When I was maturing a little material. But uh, until that point, I was like, they would use it as like insults, and I took it as like a prideful thing of, yeah, I'm cool like that. But um, yeah, like, yeah, I love this series. And I'm uh, glad I wish, talking, I wish um, but, you know, technology was better in 2001. I, you know, uh, centaurs look better <laughs> in five than they do in this one. And it's a little weird. Uh, otherwise, you know, it, it, it's a Chris Columbus movie. So like when you, when you watch Chris Columbus movies from the eighties, they have that kid like feel, but I was younger then obviously, uh, in some cases not born, but I went back and watched it when I was younger here. I was a teenager. So at like, like Rue, I have this just feeling and I, especially cause I know what's like coming forward and how the story progresses and things mature from there. Uh, I don't particularly like this movie. Uh, I like parts of it, but there's just certain portions that I'm just like, oh, man, so so juvenile, you know? Uh, and the kids are obviously terrible actors because they're kids, but it revolves a lot around the kids. So that takes me out of it a little bit. You are right, Colton. It is the most, um, it is one of the ones that's more true to the book because it's a shorter story and <laughs> that book, so you can fit more into it. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I like the series, obviously. It's just for this, I just, you know, it's not not one of my faves. So me and Amaru talked about I'll just about say, I've, I've never been a, like, uh, especially because I was a movie lover way before I started reading books. Um, when the Harry Potter books came out, I hated reading. I hated reading for the life of me. It was so boring. And then I got grounded for a month and my mom was here's Harry Potter books one through four. Here's Harry Potter books one, one through four. You need to read them because you can't do anything else. Um, and that actually got me in love with reading and in love with Harry Potter because I was I was avoiding Harry Potter while all of my other classmates were reading them for years. I was like, no, no, I want no parts of this. And then I started to read them and I was like, well, books are good now. Uh, but I always try to separate movies from books. I, I don't try to like yeah. judge it off of that. I just notice, uh, they they cut a lot of the beginning of Vernon trying to avoid the letters. Yes, they cut Norbert. Right. They cut like they cut uh, Snape's part of the uh, teachers of the teachers' challenges to get to the. Uh, that's that's the part that I miss because I think it 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 focuses more on the magic oh, no. and we need people to care about logic puzzles. Logic puzzles are important. I wish that was in there. You're freaking right. And Rue, yeah. I, I also I got I, was... I also got books one through four. But my sister took book one, so I had to start with book two and then go back. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, in the yeah, book, I'm with you. Uh, one, one is cool, but it's just like, all right, let's 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 go. Uh, ramp up. Yeah, like in the book, it's the potion trial, and that's Hermione's trial. Like, yes. that's her big moment in there, and it's not really in the. In the movie, she doesn't really have that big moment. She gets the devil snare, but that yeah. lasts like two seconds, and you're like, oh. also, okay, this was the small. This is probably when I first watched it. The biggest dis not disappointment, but biggest no, and it's the smallest little thing. But in the book, they get through devil snare with fire, and there's a line I think where Hermione's like, "Where am I going to get fire?" And Ron tells her, "You're a witch, woman. What do you mean?" Yeah. <laughs> And when I read that the first time, I laughed my behind off. And when it was just like, I was like, no, no, this is the best line in the film. And then they do the follow up right after they get out. Is he like, where am I? Where are you going to get fire or something? Doesn't he say something like yeah, that? Yeah, and then he said, like, any good comedy troupe? Like, oh, man. Oh, I would have loved for them to try to deliver that line. Uh, and I think that was the one thing I was like, oh, no, that was my favorite part. But. But um, now I will say this movie was the first time I've ever heard Hermione pronounced because when you're reading the book, you think it's Hermione or Her Hermione. 
Hermione. Yeah. I was like, I have no yeah. idea how to pronounce this. I think it was the same time, like, I think maybe book four had just came out at the same time this movie came out. Because in book four, they actually, like, phonetically pronounce Hermione, I guess, to, like, get people used to, oh, yeah, this is how it's going to be pronounced in the movies. And this is how I've always intended for it. But now people have come asking what the name is. And, oh, uh, this is how it is. And this is what it's going to be in the movie. So let's not let the fans freak out. You just reminded me of a part that I that is missing in Goblet of Fire, which is Victor Crumb not being able to say Hermione, Her Hermione. And yeah. he doesn't do that in the movie. And I'm sad about oh, okay. that. I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but Goblet of Fire is the one that takes out the most. And I'm just like, stop complaining. Do you know how big that book is? They did an amazing job with this film. Shut the hell up. And the fact that they're going to do a series based on this, I I don't know if they're going to do the books as a TV series. If they do, I will love Warner Brothers forever. It's, it's got to be a, a no. Um, what they need to do is what you pitched on working title. Oh, do they, uh, the they, Yeah, they can't redo the movies in a series. Yeah. I'm not going to watch that. Oh, I, 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 even me, I'm like, I've seen, I've got the movies. I don't need it. We need a Marauders TV show. What you pitched, give me the prequel with the Marauders as a TV show. That'd be, if that's what the, the, the TV series is, that's good. That would be lovely. Yeah, um, I did like that pitch, that idea. Uh, hey, Warner Brothers, if you want to contact me, I've already got this all settled for you. I'm totally sure you're one of the six people who watch the show, but yeah, totally. I I'm got, sorry I got you didn't, you didn't, uh, you know put in for caption or, or you didn't uh, put a patent on that before you yeah, put it out I, to the world. I, I did not, in fact. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever made that idea. If I am, then we have some deprived Harry Potter fans. But For real. I would do young James and Lily before they had Harry. Just want to know what their life was like, you know, working in the ministry or like, you know, being well, they only... young wars or whatever the hell they were doing. Oh, I, I, I think that would be cool. I think they had Harry like two years after they graduated from high, uh, from Hogwarts. Hey, um, I've watched plenty of TV shows that have made their bones of taking like extending out a year or two into five or six. So, oh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, like this movie, it it was good. I I I liked it a lot. Um, I I'm. I want to rewatch the second one because the second one might, besides the Luke, I am your father twist in the movie, the the twist in uh, Chamber of Secrets is so good. Uh, it's better for sure. Yeah. Well, like it's so good how they do it. Uh, like in the books, you just see it and you're like, oh, okay, cool. And how they do it in the movie with the rearranging of all the stuff, I'm trying to be as vague as possible, even though I'm sure everyone's seen these movies. They're like 20 years old. Come on, guys. But, yeah, like, and especially since we're probably going to talk about it next week. But, yeah, um, so me and Amaru talked about this uh, before we came on today. Mm -hmm. So both of me and him have the British version of this movie, The Philosopher's Stone, or probably the original version of the movie, and then they made it for international release however you want to take that but um we were talking only four characters uh ever say the actual name of the stone everyone else just calls it the stone and it's so that they don't uh have to like have them refilm it for the international version of course i think that's super interesting it makes a lot of sense and uh i just want to mention if you uh, i'm a big podcast person uh, I listen to this podcast uh, called Binge Mode, uh, where these two people break down geek-related things like to a heavy degree. They just did the MCU. Uh, they did Potter, and they did it broken down uh, books and movies. Like for the books, they would do like five chapters, and they would do like the themes of the chapters and all this. And um, the Chamber of Secrets one is funny because uh, when they talk about like Harry figuring out like that twist that you're talking about. And they're talking about like, oh look, it's help me, help me, my friend. And he's like, 
your friend like he's he's taunting you he's not your friend look, you know, look, why are you getting this harry potter is one of the dumbest yes he really is protagonist of in the history of of everywhere harry potter is stupid he's, he's always he is so dumb and it's really apparent in the books and it's just like I, just the amount of times i'm like you idiot what are you doing uh, he, he's he's fairly slow. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. He would he would he he wouldn't be he would be in remedial math. Um, my my classes my my classes. Um, but but no, actually, I take that back. I don't even think he would be in remedial math. I think it's his common sense. It's his common sense that he doesn't have. He's a fairly intelligent dude. Fairly, he enough. does not have common sense, and it's like, what are you doing? Hermione is the only reason you're alive. Yeah. What yeah, are the you're alive? That's one thing that's a big difference between the books and the movies as well. Is in the books they make Ron like an important character because he's the one that's relative to the wizarding world. So he always tells Harry all the cool wizarding world things. And in the movies, it's Hermione who's the muggle born. So she shouldn't know all Well, I mean I didn't. Sometimes I don't know if it's me or if it's actually him who's freezing. So I just I wait. Catches up. I think it's him. Oh, oh yeah, he's, he's frozen, frozen, frozen now. Yeah, he's frozen, frozen. Uh, yeah, I I agree. They uh, they really kind of Herm Hermione's kind of the the center of all. Uh, making sure that things go right for sure, always and forever. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Harry would have died fifty times if not for Hermione. And I think yeah. that's very clear. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Uh, but I'm very glad anytime c anybody can agree upon the stupidity of I, one Harry Potter. I hate it. I, I Well, I mean, I love it because it makes a lot of sense because he's a stupid kid who grew up under a staircase. What does he know, honestly? Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, kudos. What I learned from this all beyond, you know, how it is that you should treat people is that uh, if you grow up in a house of dentists, it's better than growing up in a house of drill salesmen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so both of, both of them use drills, though. So it's true. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> Why? And, and, and and we know Arthur Weasley would be like fascinated, fascinated with drills. Super fascinated. So. Um, all right. So since I won't be here next week, I will go into a little bit of uh, Chamber of Secrets. Um, huh? Arthur Weasley is my MVP of everything, um, and Mike Williams is is brilliant as Arthur Weasley. I, I don't mm. think he gets enough screen time in any film because um, no. his character is just um, what exactly is the function of a rubber duck is is just a line of all lines. Um, Definitely my favorite yeah. one from that movie. Yes, sure. um, and I believe Kenneth Branagh is probably one of the best performances in the entirety of of this universe um because he has a singular performance and he pulls gilderoy off to a t it, it's to the point that you really wish um i, I know they couldn't do it because there's so much to get through and you know yeah, or the, the, fourth and, the fourth and fifth are just you can't yeah. make you can't make that yeah. movie out of that entirety of the book but yes uh yeah, i really I, wish they had gone into that that ward in the you know, Magical Maladies Hospital. That and and you do miss that. I, I don't like how they do the Neville parents thing, and that I wish they had done it the way they had done it in the books. But yeah, you, you know, you have to make concessions, so I get it. Yeah. But uh, I'm quickly talking about Chamber Secrets before I go, since I won't be here next week. Um, just saying that uh, Arthur Weasley is the man, uh, and uh, Kenneth Branagh does amazing as Gilderoy Lockhart. Um, both of those performances are great, um, and I think. Uh, I would say this is, it's not perfect yet, but it's a good blend of children's film and getting into like actual being a movie movie and not straight just the kids film. It's not there yet, uh, but Chamber of Secrets is definitely a jump up from, from, from Philosopher's Stone. So. It does. You can tell everybody's grown up quite a bit during that year, which is really like two. Or, I know it was a year between, but it feels more like two. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, I need to eat. I got to go. Uh, studying. 
Yay. So. Of course. Anything else you want to plug? I got a chance. You'll see the, uh, you'll see the hit uh, for what got to say sometime this week. Um, it, it just depends on when I can edit that up. Uh, I was telling, oh, you, I, I, I can't remember if you were on or not, but it's called, the next episode is, is a category uh, that hasn't been done yet. No movie. It's not a movie. It's not music. It's not um, TV either. It's another form of entertainment. Um, uh, so when that comes out, uh, hopefully I get a, a, a good crew. Um, maybe some new faces or some faces we don't see too often. Uh, cause it's, it's a different category that, um, can also fit in some movies in there, but I'm going to try to like, keep it focused on, uh, you know, the rules, everything goes. So, so all the little spinoffs goes, but I'm going to keep it focused. I'm going to make my list. My list is going to focus on the main category and not try to put in the movies and stuff, uh, that, that came from it. But it'll be fun. Look out for that. Uh, Bite size breakdown as always. Um, so th- that's everywhere. And then look for me. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. I super appreciate it. Yes, sir. No See ya. God mode. God mode. All right. Um, so TV time. Uh, yes. TV. I watched this early this morning. Let's. I also did at like five fifteen this morning. I think I watched it seven or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked it. Um, they're really fleshing out Omega and Hunter's uh, relationship. Hold on. Hold on, you got to do an inch. You got to ramp it up, man. We're what are we talking about here for TV? Oh, the Bad Batch. We're talking about the Bad Batch. Uh, episode three. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I, I'm not wearing... I don't know why I did that. No. I'm not wearing Star Wars. I'm not. You're absolutely right. But, uh, yeah, like, the episode was super interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, spoilers, everybody. Spoilers. If you haven't watched The Bad Batch, go and do that now. And Take the time. Not half the time that the first episode took, even more sorry, <laughs> less than half the time it took. And then please return so that we can have a discussion about episode three. Yes, okay, great. You're back. Good, good for you. You, you do a really good job at that. Thank you. It's like you've seen me do that, like uh, it's true a times. <laughs> I'm an observer of people and behaviors. Yeah, I did that all for Wandavision and <laughs> Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and you have picked up just fine. Thank you. But yes, um, the episode was great. Um, it's my favorite so far, I think, and that could be just because I wasn't. I was studying for stuff and I really didn't pay attention to one and two, but I really, really enjoyed this episode. I paid attention very focus heavy. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my favorite part of the show was. Like, I really liked uh, Crosshair's entire thing. So good. I mean, it's, it's, you really oh. got, the, you really got those episode seven uh, Finn vibes in that part where they're, trying to figure out where Saw Gerrera is and he's he's just like let's fucking murk some people and he goes at it. Yeah, and like I couldn't tell which is the one that he killed. Was it the guy who wanted command the entire time? Yeah, absolutely. He definitely okay, killed. So he's trying to be a baller the entire episode and then I'm trying. he's pulling it off. Yeah, and then he's like, hey, yeah, eliminate the casualty. And he's like, no, that's not what we do. And so Crosshair's killed them, and he's like, no, take care of business. Good sho- good shoulder, good soldiers follow orders. He's so menacing. I love his voice. I love the way D. Bradley Baker does his voice. It's, it's very menacing. I really like it. But it, you still feel, based on the juxtaposition of what Omega was telling Hunter about that it's the inhibitor chip, that's causing it and then you have those weird parts with a uh, wrecker where his head hurts so you're wondering if like his inhibitor chip might start coming into play as well but he, uh so good i i, I very much enjoyed uh, crosshair is my favorite and he just continues to you know kind of show out in these episodes 
Yeah, and then there's the entire section of the like the Cayman Owens have their little plan. Like, I think maybe this is the reason why we don't see clones in the rest of the uh, like other stuff after this. Is I'm guessing there's my prediction is there's going to be some like clone rebellion that the Cayman Owens uh, institute, and then that's the reason why we have bumbling stormtroopers because they decide. That now they don't have anyone proper to train them, and this admiral fails in his mission somehow to like raise an army for the empire, and uh, yeah, like because if you have someone like Crosshairs le- helping train your people, the empire should be a lot better. But of you course, really he, uh, yeah, you would think so, but obviously, like he can't go around and go to every planet and train, but he could, like, create the protocols that then go to it. He can, and you know how in The Phantom Menace a lot of people made fun of the fact that it was really about, like, government bureaucracy and trade federation taxation and those governmental stipulations that nobody gave a crap about? I like this interplay between the Kaminoans and the clone uh the clone advocates versus the empire and the militaristic soldiers for hire or soldier enlistment uh, advocates. I like how they're butting heads. It's it's actually something that's more interesting to me uh, as a way to talk about jurisdictional integrity than it has been in like the prequel movies. So I really enjoy that part of it. Uh, There's something that we didn't talk about last week that I just realized, which was mentioned at the beginning I, I, again, because I wasn't paying as much attention in episode two, uh, they went to Salukami, yeah. which is the which is the planet that one of the Jedi in Order sixty six is killed on. Stas Ali, she's on the motorbike. That's yeah. on the planet that the clones visit in episode two, and they're coming from. I, I just wanted to make mention. I was very happy to finally realize that coming into episode three and making bigger bridge connections between Revenge of the Sith and the prequels in this. Yeah. um, I really, I really like this episode. And I, I wonder at the beginning why Wrecker's head was hurting because it's on that side where the inhibitor chip should be. Yep. But then at the end of the episode, he was just acting fine and he made her the room and stuff. So I'm like, Hmm. I think done on purpose so that you forget about it. Yeah, and now, like, Tech's working on that machine that's going to apparently be able to do something with your inhibitor chip, which I guess makes sense because if you've watched the end of Clone Wars and if you've watched Rebels, like, a lot of the clones take their chips out. So if Tech's able to uh, develop this device to find it, Mm -hmm. then maybe by the end of the series we won't have to see the Bad Batch be dead. That'd be great. But Did this episode feel a lot, and obviously it has the Dave Filoni feels. To me, it was like a combo of the first two episodes of season two of The Mandalorian, because it has that like crate dragony feel with the the moon dragon that we don't know what it looks like till like the end, and it's very menacing and it tunnels, and then they go to you know and, and the the ship crashes out of hyperspace and it goes on a desolate moon, a la like episode two which is also like a horror movie element of Mandalorian, which this kind of had a horror element flavor too. So you can see influences of the other Star Wars shows creeping in, not only from Clone Wars, which is obvious because of the animation and what's going on, but also from the live action TV. Yeah, um, I agree. So what do you, do you have any theories or anything about Omega? Or have any thoughts about what she is? Do I have any theories about her? Like, a lot of people... Because I don't think she's a clone of Jango Fett. I think whatever uh, she is... Why does everybody sound like they're from uh, uh, the the uh, eastern side, uh, right off the eastern bow of Australia, then? Yeah. I. That's the thing. Like, I think... Because... It made it seem like when the Cameron Owens at the end were talking about they need a new donor, that yeah. she's she might be the donor. She could be. Or whoever she came from might be the donor. 
which makes it seem like like all the other clones are males. So unless like, and she kind of in the first episode she could kind of sense what Crosshair was going for. So maybe she could be force sensitive, and this might be the thing that points Palpatine in the direction of "Ooh, I can clone myself," mm. and you know, then it would lead to Ray in the sequel trilogy. Like, if he figured out, ooh, Force-sensitives can be cloned, I'll try it on myself. Oh, crap, my my son is not Force-sensitive. Let's get rid of him. Oh, uh, wait, he had relations with a woman and made a child, and that child is super powerful? All right, let's, let's try this all again. Well, when you say it like that, it sounds kind of silly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't really thought about what Omega is. I've just been kind of enjoying the ride. I, I, for some reason with cartoons, I don't really critically look at them as much and think about what's hap like what could happen in the future. I just kind of sit and enjoy it. Yeah, I don't know if it's because of that or it's because her hairdo in the first two episodes looks a whole lot like the hairdo that S Senator and Chancellor Palpatine had. Which painted the thing of, oh, what if she's a clone of Palpatine, but it turned out to be female, and that this was the... Like, they're trying to really hard to connect to the sequel trilogy with everything they've got, and then I immediately thought, huh, that, that, that's too obvious, Colton. So I'm like, ooh, if she is a Force-sensitive clone, then that might be why Palpatine... Because, like, they revealed in a comic book here recently yeah. that... He's had the plan for Exegol since at least the end of Return or sometime in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi because he has like Luke's hand there. Yep. And he's already building the ships and he has all like the ab ability to clone stuff. So if they're you trying to use all the mediums that we like to try and explain the trilogy that a lot of people don't like. Mm. I could I could understand that. Yeah, I uh, and, and you know you have the Death Star technology in it, so make a you know for a nice transition. Uh, when I did think about when they talked about donor, I did wonder if this opened up for Boba Fett to be involved, but not. Yeah. We aren't sure where he is at this moment. I mean, we assume he's in the employ of Jabba the Hutt, but well, not. Not sure exactly where he is. I think during this time, he would still be young enough to where he's still a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he's actually in Jabba's service. He okay. might still be working for Cad Bane at this point. Okay. According to if they keep the the spot canon that they tried to they tried to do years ago that him and Cad Bane gets a, get in a fight and that's how his armor gets the dent in it. But that was, and, and now they've done the entire best car thing and how it can't be destroyed. So they might retcon that into, yeah, like he can show up in this show. And this is, might be how him and Finnick meet because he's going to be in this uh, uh, season. Mm -hmm. So it could be that they met, meet this far away and that's their origin for the Book of Boba Fett. But who knows? I don't know. I, I just really enjoyed this episode. It was a nice, crisp 25 minutes, action y, horror y, um, political drama y. Uh, I, I thought it all blended together very well. Yep. Um, I agree. And so far, besides um, Master De Man, all right, Kanan's Master, because I'm going to butcher her name. Um, in the first episode, we haven't really seen any, like, besides her getting shot down in the lightsaber, and then the lightsaber drop in when, at Camino. This might be the first series where we don't really talk about the Force as much. And I might be okay with it. Like, my theories on what Omega is kind of really contradicts that, but I kind of hope that we just stay with the Bad Batch and don't deal with any Force sensitives. I don't but, think they want to. Honestly, given how this is kind of developing and un unfurling, it kind of seems like they want to keep that separate if they can. Yeah, and I think if if they make Omega Force-sensitive, 
it will seem too much like Grogu in The Mandalorian of a rough and tough finds a force sensitive and does the thing and I don't want that. I don't think anybody does. Yeah. But um yeah, I like the show. Um I'm ready for it to come like we got thirteen more episodes. That's gonna be sure is gonna be something. unravel the mysteries of where these guys end up, I guess. Yeah, like I, I don't know if it will they run into Cody or uh, Rex at Rex. a point, like or uh, man, I'm trying to remember uh, who the other two uh, clone troopers that are with Rex in Rebels. Uh, you can think on it and come back. Yep, I'll figure it out. Ah. Literally, as soon as we end the broadcast, well, I'll have remembered. Um, and that's just what happens. Same thing with my trivia mind. is as soon, I, as soon as we finish and I answer the question, I'm like, nope, that's wrong. I say the answer, and I'm like, nope, that's not right. 15 seconds is simultaneously super long and not very long at all. No. It absolutely is not. But, um... Yeah, like, I, I really like the episode. Um, I'm glad we're doing this. And then in a few weeks, we'll get to talk low-key. Low, low-key on the low-key. Yeah. And that will be on when That will come out on Wednesday. So we'll have... I won't have to actually, like, you know, wake up uh, super early in the morning. I yeah, can just give me a few days to actually watch it, which would be nice. Yeah. Like, I can just turn off my notifications on Twitter, and it will be okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, all in all, I think this is uh, going to be the wrapping of the show. Uh, yeah, I filmed 45 minutes in part one, and now this is 118 minutes. So, so much. Yeah, it was uh, good. And just like I, I did at the let's take the spoilers off and go to farewell. Uh, uh, do you have anything you would like to plug or anything like that? Uh, at Robert Kastner on Facebook. I'm going to be recording an episode of my podcast in the next month. Let's start one to start off episode, which will be nice. And I'll talk about kind of where it's going to be and all the all that jazz. So things are actually progressing on that front. Uh, my There will be more matches coming out, multiplex and full metal. Uh, also probably TMG and Jack of All Trivia and all of those things. So... Look out for me. You know, two already dropped this week. There's more that are coming. Uh, so look out for that. I really appreciate people watching them and uh, giving their opinions. Let me know how they think it went. Otherwise, nope, just around on Facebook. Just come at me. I like to talk to people. Yep. And uh, of course, like the beginning of the show, y'all didn't get to see, but I talked about my channel, the Supernova Network, and talked announced that I'm going to have a movie uh, based show and I'm going to have a fandom based show which I think me and you have talked about but yep. not on a public forum before so um, my buddy who is going to help me run the movie show has given me a we're going to do James Bond hmm. at least we're going to do the, the first four Dan or the Daniel Craig ones and then we're going to take a break for a few weeks and then do Sean Connery and then Lays and B, and then, but e between each one, we'll take like a two or three week break and then start the next one. But, um, I could use that for studying purposes. Yep. Yeah, but, um, so we're going to do Godzilla, Batman, Dracula. Those are the three that he recommended that were in that gap. If you would ever want to be on the show and you have a particular, like, set of movies that you like, that they don't have to be something we've talked about on the podcast before. They can just be about anything. Like if you if you really like Cool Hand Luke, if I can find it, I'll watch it and we'll talk about it for like fifteen to twenty minutes. And that's how long the episodes typically will be. Well, fifteen to twenty minutes, just one chunk, boom, we're done. And I'll hit you up. Yep. And uh, there's the the YouTube link. And yeah, there's like a million characters unless until you get a hundred subscribers apparently that's yep what your name is so let's see 
Yep. So there's all of that. Um, I had it on there for like 45 minutes earlier. And so go to that channel. You should subscribe to it, fair fans. And uh, if you have to pause this and like type that all in, I completely understand. Uh, I'll try and get Aaron to put the link in the description. I will try to remember to have him do that. But um, yeah, it's loads of fun. Um, we got uh, some logos. Like here's our uh, the logo of the channel. Boom. That should be the cover picture of the channel whenever I put it on there. Uh, you know, I got to do some logistical work. But the content is starting the beginning of June. The first Monday in June will be the first uh, time. The, uh... Oh, I think you cut out there again. I imagine you were going to say something along the lines of uh, first Monday of June is when the first episode will come out. Yeah, uh, and I was actually mistaken there. Uh, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday? Which would be, is that the first Wednesday? So if that's the case, that would be... Let me pull up my uh, handy-dandy calendar. That would be June 2nd. Is that what we're referring to, Colton? I think, uh, based on your expression, seems about right. If not that, then the ninth. Sounds pretty good. It's going to be a, a fantastic farewell here with all the uh, ins and outs, cutting in and out. But, you know, you make do with what you make do. Uh, very exciting. The idea of a uh, patron of this particular show getting a chance to branch off and do interesting things as uh, people are focusing on me now uh we're all trying to do our own thing if we have an opportunity to uh, obviously with pandemic it was a nice chance to get an opportunity to do so uh as things progress you learn some things you think about how it is that you could apply them to your passions that's what we're all trying to do we're trying to figure out a way to harness those passions for the sake of entertainment information combination of the two hopefully when that happens all comes together in a nice tapestry of inner workings of media friendly concepts and that's what's going to happen with colton show colton's network and the super supernova network so we really want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to use that link as was described uh go ahead and find out where that channel is going to be when content starts coming up we really appreciate the likes and subscribes. That would be wonderful. So make sure you get a chance to do that. Uh, for me, uh, obviously there will be uh, podcasts as talked about, uh, but there will be mostly audio podcasts. So we'll provide links uh, where it is that's going to be distributed. Really excited about that. That's going more into my other passion, which is talking about sports, which I know people here. Uh, don't necessarily are coming in to talk about, uh, but uh, it's something that's really near and dear to my heart and to my co-host heart. Uh, that's going to be something we're going to talk about quite often, have our own uh, ideas for how it is. Maybe that will turn into a, a network of podcasts, perhaps. Don't want to talk about that. Want to keep things close to the vest if possible. But, you know, we will discuss that in more ferocity and more dynamics when opportunity comes. Uh, this is the longest farewell you're probably ever going to hear, but uh, when you're not the one that controls the stream, all you're trying to make sure is there's not a whole lot of dead air. I know things can be edited, but, you know, have an opportunity and you're the only one here on the stream, you just kind of spit consciousness and that's what's happening. Uh, Wondering how long this would go. I could probably talk about all the Harry Potter movies and just ruin the next few weeks uh, for Colton's content. Don't want to do that. That would be a little too much. Um, hopefully he gets a chance to come back so we can you know, move off stream. Uh, but that'll be fun. Getting a chance to go through 
do a little bit more movie TV talk, more schmo on fan leagues. Obviously, we just touched the tip of the iceberg. It's very kind of me centric when we were talking about the fan leagues, but you know, we'll get there and we'll get to talk more about it as Colton returns, as I've been riffing for a few minutes. Oh, good. My uh, internet has been just the worst because my family has decided let's watch TV while I'm filming. Well, that's okay. That happens. But before that happens again, let's go ahead and uh, call it a day. Farewell. Yep. We'll put the links all in the description. Absolutely. You find it, you watch it. There will be other videos on there before that, to like as an introduction, but June 2nd will be the official first day. That's what I assumed, and that's what I told the good people. Yep, that will be the first day, and it will be a uh, different sort of content. My channel will be a lot more family-friendly, so subscribe if you want to hear all about that, and then stuff that w won't be described talked about there will be always be talked about on the podcast. So, yep. good deal. Uh, thank you, Robert, for coming on and vamping while my internet was being a terrorist. So, yep, vampire in disguise. Don't forget to tip your virtual waitress.